following the release of Mass Effect, the team at BioWare celebrated their latest masterpiece. Strong sales, critical acclaim, and a handful of awards made Mass Effect BioWare's biggest and best game to date. For most games, this would mean a sequel was all but guaranteed. However, the team at BioWare already made plans for Mass Effect to be a trilogy of games, and work on the second entry in the saga was already in development. The story of Mass Effect continues with Mass Effect 2. Development of Mass Effect 2 began in earnest after the release of Mass Effect in 2007. Casey Hudson continued his role as director of the game, and Drew Karpishan returned as lead writer. Much of the groundwork for Mass Effect 2 was already implemented with the release of the original. For much of the team at BioWare, the goals for Mass Effect 2 revolved around refining the gameplay while further fleshing out the Mass Effect universe. BioWare focused on improving the game's shooting combat before adding in RPG elements to give Mass Effect 2 a more modern feel. Gone was the need to constantly pause the combat to give orders to squad mates. Instead, menu options would appear in real time to help keep the focus on combat. Regenerating health was added to the game, alongside the use of ammo for weapons to add more tension to the game's combat. Exploration, however, was significantly toned down, as the team at BioWare axed the planetary vehicle excursions, opting for more streamlined level design. Mass Effect 2 was officially revealed at the Game Developers Conference in 2009 to mostly positive reception. Unlike the original Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2 was scheduled to release on both the Xbox 360 and PC on the same day with EA publishing the title. During the reveal, BioWare showcased two different scenes, one focusing on the new title's improvement to combat, while the other focused on conversations. A minute-long teaser trailer for the game was also shown off. The trailer didn't feature any noticeable improvements to the gameplay, but left players with a single message regarding the game's protagonist. Commander Shepard was killed in action. Mass Effect 2 was showcased at E3 2009 with a new teaser trailer and a playable demo at the show. Like Mass Effect 1, Mass Effect 2 won the Best Role Playing Game Award from the Game Critics Awards and was nominated for Best Console Game and Best of Show, losing both awards to Naughty Dog's Uncharted 2. Mass Effect 2's shorter development time wasn't without struggles. The Great Recession caused the game's original budget to be cut, and the 2009 flu pandemic caused many developers to be unable to work in the final few months of the game's development. Over 150 people worked on Mass Effect 2, including some staff members of EA Montreal. As development came closer to its end in October of 2009, Mass Effect 2 was given its final release window of January 2010. On January 26, 2010, Mass Effect 2 released in North America for both the PC and Xbox 360. PAL Territories received the game a few days later. The sequel was immediately hit with rave reviews, including a 9.6 from IGN and a perfect score from Eurogamer. During the week of Mass Effect 2's release, over 2 million copies of the game were shipped. A standard edition and collector's edition were made available from retailers, while a digital deluxe version of the game was sold through digital storefronts. During its first few days on the market, Mass Effect 2 sold more than half a million units, making the title an immediate commercial success. Mass Effect 2 was sold with an online pass, like many of EA's games during the early 2010s. This online pass, which was available in all new copies of the game, gave players access to the Cerberus Network, an in-game hub for news on Mass Effect. More importantly, Cerberus Network unlocked key pieces of downloadable content for Mass Effect 2. Five pieces of downloadable content were made available for the Cerberus Network within the first two months after launch. Most of these pieces of DLC simply gave the player new weapons and cosmetic upgrades to armor, but two of these downloadable expansions offered new story missions that were inaccessible to those who received the game as a second-hand copy. The worst of these was Zaid, The Price of Revenge. Released only two days after Mass Effect 2 came out, Zaid came with a new squad mate, the titular character himself, and two new in-game missions. Like many of EA's online passes, Mass Effect 2's was met with criticism from both the gaming industry and gamers themselves. Even bonus items that came with physical copies of Mass Effect 2 at various retailers required the player to use the Cerberus network to activate these products. Thankfully, EA ended their practice of online passes around the start of the 8th generation of gaming. In May 2013, the Cerberus network was officially shut down and all the DLC available on it was made free on their respective digital storefronts. In the months following Mass Effect 2's release, 
multiple DLC packs were released on the Xbox Live Marketplace and through EA's Origin service or through Bioware's website for the PC version. In April of 2010, Kasami, Stolen Memory, was released for $6.99. The DLC pack included a new squad member, Kasami, as well as two additional missions revolving around her character. The next major DLC release, Overlord, hit digital marketplaces in June of 2010. Like the Kasami DLC pack, Overlord retailed for $6.99 and included four new missions set on the planet 8. The final piece of major DLC in 2010 came in September with the release of Lair of the Shadow Broker for $9.99. This DLC pack followed Mass Effect 1 character Liara Sony and her dealings with the underworld of the Mass Effect universe with the Shadow Broker. All three pieces of DLC were met with a positive reception, with Lair of the Shadow Broker receiving notable attention for its expansion of the overarching story of the Mass Effect trilogy. At the end of 2010, Mass Effect 2 was a tour de force for various video game award programs. The title was nominated for several awards, including Best RPG, Best Story, and the overall Best Game of 2010. The most notable award Mass Effect 2 won was Game of the Year from the Interactive Achievement Awards, the first of two that BioWare would claim. When EA purchased BioWare in 2007, many games journalists were quick to ask about the possibility of Mass Effect releasing on Sony's PlayStation 3. BioWare denied the existence of a PlayStation 3 version of Mass Effect 2 in the run-up to its release, saying that the game would remain an Xbox 360 console exclusive for the time being. Luckily for PlayStation fans, the window of exclusivity wouldn't last too long. At Gamescom 2010, a port of Mass Effect 2 was announced for the PlayStation 3 with a release window of January 2011. This port was officially released on January 18, 2011, almost one year after the release of Mass Effect 2 on other consoles. The PS3 version was notable for a handful of reasons. This version of the game came with all previously downloadable content for free and included the then PlayStation exclusive Mass Effect Genesis. One concern many gamers had upon learning of a PlayStation 3 version of Mass Effect 2 was over the saved data transfer used in the Xbox 360 and PC versions. In these versions, players could import the Commander Shepard they played the first game with. In doing so, actions taken in the previous title would affect Shepard's relationships with the world around them. There were also key decisions made during Mass Effect, such as having to save one of two crewmates and leaving the other to die. In the sequels, the abandoned character would not appear if the player imported their save data, adding a layer of personalization and ownership players experienced with Shepard. Mass Effect Genesis attempted to fix this problem. Produced by Dark Horse Comics, Genesis gave players an interactive comic that covered six major decisions the players would normally have made in Mass Effect 1. Mass Effect Genesis was included as a free download with the PlayStation 3 version and occurred after the opening mission of Mass Effect 2 and before the player customized Shepard to start their adventure. Genesis only remained a PlayStation exclusive for a few months. In March of 2011, Mass Effect Genesis was released on both PC and Xbox 360 for $3.99. One final piece of DLC was released for Mass Effect 2 in March of 2011. Arrival followed Shepard and their crew to the edge of the galaxy to investigate reports of an incoming invasion of the Reapers, the primary antagonist of Mass Effect 3. Arrival was available on all platforms at the same time for $6.99 and brought an end to Bioware's work on the second Mass Effect game. My own journey with the Mass Effect series began with the second entry. At the time, I didn't have an Xbox 360 or a PC, so my only option to play the sequel came from the PS3 version. I waited over a year before picking up Mass Effect 2, using some money from a senior trip to purchase both it and the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. I spent most of my summer playing through the Metal Gear Solid games, and that unfortunately left Mass Effect 2 on the back burner. It wasn't until later that fall, after I moved into a dorm at my college, that I finally dived in. I was immediately hooked by the game. Every night, I set aside time between classes, a floundering social life, and my early attempts at YouTube to check in with Commander Shepard and the rest of the crew on the Normandy. It was the first game I actually beat after moving away from home, and in many ways represents the first game I played as an adult. My love for the series spread. My roommate at the time grew so fond of watching me play in our tiny room that he ended up buying the Mass Effect games for PC. It quickly became known around the dorm that I was playing the game. My RA asked me several times to turn down the volume, often to my own dismay. My sweet mate casually dropped Godspeed Commander at the end of a conversation, something that immediately brightened my day. Mass Effect 2 was my comfort game during an incredibly stressful time in my life. 
No matter what was happening, be it my horrible grades or loneliness from a lack of friends, Mass Effect 2 was always there for me. I'll never forget piloting the Normandy into the final mission, losing three squad mates along the way because I didn't upgrade my ship. It was heart-wrenching. I had spent so many hours with all these characters and watching them die on screen tore a hole through my heart. Mass Effect 2 is one of my favorite games of all time and my personal favorite of the Mass Effect trilogy. I know I'll never be able to experience this masterpiece for the first time again, but I can't wait to jump back in with the Legendary Edition. After all, it's up to me to save the galaxy from the collectors. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying this look back at the Mass Effect trilogy. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and share it on your favorite social media sites. In the comments below, let me know your journey with Commander Shepard in Mass Effect 2. Subscribe to catch the next episode as soon as it comes out. In the next part, we'll be taking a look at the final and perhaps most controversial game of the trilogy, Mass Effect 3.